uh, our team uh, works on using the, the, the fraud funnel philosophy. So at the front door of the fraud funnel, you have our uh, engineering team. You have algorithmic filtration. Now, this is both real-time filtration and this is offline uh, analysis. And they look at every click. They look at the IP address. They look at the user agent. They, they look at patterns. They make decisions. And quickly, they uh, either in real-time or over the next few hours, they decide if, if this is something that should be billed or not for the client. If, uh, if it's fraud, it's called an invalid, unbillable click, and it gets discarded. user doesn't get billed for it or the, the advertiser, and if it is billable, it moves through and it goes into their reports, and eventually they'll get billed, they'll, get, they'll have to pay for that. At the other end, you've got, the end we don't like to see is escalations from advertisers. This is when the advertiser notices something's wrong, and they cut a ticket, they let their AM know, account manager know, and it comes to our team to do the investigation. Now, we, we don't like this to happen because it means they notice something's wrong. And this is, what, this is what got Google and Yahoo in trouble with the class action lawsuit, is they didn't pay enough attention to these uh, advertisers who were complaining about uh, these clicks that appeared to be uh, not real people. So uh, we, we have a team of now we're up to 30, and a good half of them are investigators uh, dedicated to escalations from advertisers. Now, the middle part, what I call being proactively reactive, our team manages, and, and this is where the, the, the PhDs come in. Uh, they do signal processing, they look at all the data, whether it's filtered or not, and uh, they don't understand fraud necessarily, uh, the mechanics of fraud, but they can, they can find patterns. So they, they find these patterns, and then they pass them over to our forensic investigators who make sense of the patterns. And so they'll deep dive. I mean, they'll go and look at the, the uh, you know, the network layer. Uh, they'll look at the packet level. You know, they'll, they'll do stuff that I don't even understand. But they're just brilliant. They're, basically, we hire former hackers who uh, decide to, you know, go legit. That, that's a good profile if they pass the background check, which many don't. Because if they've been in trouble with the law, we still can't hire them, even though they're brilliant. Um, so that's what our team does. Now back to our case study. Who is responsible? Well. The Digital Crimes Unit was interested as well. And uh, we started a uh, deep forensics investigation that lasted six months. And we started by noticing that uh, the user agents were all the same, which led to, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because it's very technical, um, which led to a certain set of IP addresses and then led to a whole set of proxies, which was a dead end for us. So the power of the John Doe lawsuit uh, allowed us to uh, to file a lawsuit, and therefore we subpoenaed the ISPs, connected the IP addresses, uh, and confirmed that seven accounts were, uh, we confirmed them as being suspicious, which led to names of LLCs and actual people, and Eric Lamb was the top of the chain. Uh, and then, who is Eric Lamb? Well, we found out a lot of things after we got our investigators, they hit the pavement, and they found out some interesting information. We learned that he was from Shanghai, born and born there, Early on, he came to Vancouver, where he lived with his family. And we even have pictures of the condo he lived in. So, I mean, we were tracking this guy, waiting to serve these papers. The guy talked about himself all the time. So, if, <laughs> social networking made it easy to learn more about him. This is Eric Lam, and it's interesting reading. He's from uh, Guangzhou, I guess I thought it was Shanghai, but he's, he describes himself as a contrarian, preterist, non Trinitarian, dilettante, and a movie aficionado, and I disdain egoistic hedonism, yet he's frauding everybody. Uh, we found more information about his interests. We, we saw a picture of him as a kid, waving to the camera, and this is public. He put it up himself, but his passport photo. <laughs> so we nailed this guy. So with that, thanks for listening, and feel free to contact me, and I'll do the same. I'll put some cards on the, on the table there, but I uh, appreciate your time.